Hey there. Well, I guess we've all heard or read that the very first Alox Swiss Army knife was the Pioneer brought out by Victorinox in 1957, which later became the basis for the Type 1961 soldier's knives. But was it the first aluminum Swiss Army knife? Well, not by a long shot. You're looking at an aluminum winger that is approximately 100 years old. This is a very rare and remarkable knife from Dave Arnold's collection, and it has quite a story behind it. But before I tell you how Dave came to acquire this and how the knife came to be in the fine state it's in today, let me just tell you a little bit about what's so special about it. Uh, first of all, it's age. Here you can see this is Winger's very first shield design. They used this from the time Winger became known as Winger, after Cutellery Swiss, from 1907 up to about 1920. It also has a very vintage tang stamp, the Winger Delamont with the three faces, also used from 1907 onwards, and a solid screwdriver, no cap lifter which dates this knife probably 1910 or earlier. So you're looking at a knife that dates from 1907 to 1910, so that's what I say approximately 100 years old, and remarkably it has aluminum scales. These very early First Shield wingers almost always come in brown fiber scales, although Dave does have one in black fiber scales that we call the Black Beauty, uh, which is also very rare. But you can't really talk about this knife without talking about the history of aluminum a little bit because it's just so rare and unusual to find this old of a knife uh, in aluminum. So aluminum was around back around the first decade or two of the 20th century, 1910, 1920s, but it just wasn't widely used. Probably the first time people heard about aluminum could have been from uh, Jules Verne's 1865 novel, Journey to the Moon, where he describes an aluminum spaceship. <laughs> but it wasn't until like 1886 and 1887 that there were discoveries on how to extract aluminum from first aluminum oxide and then uh, more readily available bauxite that the use of aluminum started to grow. And then, you know, World War II and after the 50s saw a wider spread industrial use of aluminum. But early on, aluminum was considered like a precious metal and was just reserved for small luxury items. As a matter of fact, there's a little uh, interesting tidbit I ran across. Napoleon III, the first uh, president of the French Republic, used to serve his state dinners on aluminum plates. And the rank and file guests got plates just simply made of gold and silver. <laughs> yeah, wow, you want to talk about slumming it. So aluminum, uh, at the time this knife was made, was really cutting edge, uh, kind of a high-tech luxury metal, which makes this knife really ahead of its time. Okay, so let me tell you how Dave Arnold came to acquire this knife, because it's a great story. You know, Dave, like a lot of us collectors, spends some time on eBay hoping for something interesting to pop up. Well, one day, within four minutes of it being listed, he caught this listing from an antique dealer, not a knife dealer, but an antique dealer out of Greece. Just the one picture, all the tools closed except for the blade, and an inadequate description. It was a buy it now, and uh, the price was enough where it might cause some people to hesitate on taking a flyer on it, uh, but it was low enough that if the knife turned out to be authentic, it would be a steal. So Dave saw what he thought was a first shield winger, and even though the knife was so tarnished, he was afraid it was a regular knife painted silver, he went ahead and pulled the trigger, bought it immediately, uh, and later the seller told him, that there had already been eight queries asking for more pictures. <laughs> so sometimes it pays just to take a chance. Um, after some delay, the knife was shipped to Canada where Dave confirmed it was authentic 
and he was thrilled to learn that the scales were solid aluminum and it was one of Winger's very first officer's knives, much like his Black Beauty. And upon getting the knife, Dave also discovered that it had a broken can opener, as he suspected from the listing's only picture because you couldn't see the pull tab uh, in the scale cutout. So he set about trying to find a suitable replacement part uh, from an age and size appropriate knife and uh, a cutler with enough experience to do that repair for him. So he sent the knife back to Switzerland where two fellow collectors and friends, John Reese and Stefan Schober, helped him find a replacement can opener from an age and size appropriate old Winger Tahara knife and deliver it to a cutler capable of doing the work. Well, after a false start with the first cutler, Stefan collected the knife and took the knife to a second renowned Swiss cutler who promptly and expertly did the work and refused payment for it because of the historical significance of the knife. Later, Stefan and Dave gifted a uh, gift basket from a butcher down the street to the cutlers that worked on the knife. Okay, so this knife's long journey has now brought it from Switzerland to North Carolina, the United States, and soon it will be headed back to Canada to its rightful owner. But before we let it go, we want to take a good look at it, let it start its own show here. Uh, and let me just talk about the repair work real quickly and we'll run through the knife. But the cutler who repaired this obviously had to drill and punch out the pins, disassemble the knife, put in the new can opener, reassemble the knife, put in new pins, peen them and grind them flush. They had to do the, all that without disturbing these scales too much or this badge uh, and also returning the bale to the knife. They did a wonderful job. You can see here that the pins uh, look good. Now, to grind those flush, they had to come right up to the aluminum. I'm sure it left a few little marks, so they just burnished that aluminum enough to uh, remove those marks, take away the oxidation and the tarnish, uh, take away some of the finer scratches, but, but they left a really nice vintage antique look to it. And while they were at it, they polished all the tools. And as I mentioned, they refused payment. Um, they did also polish and sharpen the blades. Here's a look at that main blade again. These are spear point blades and they're, they're very slender on these older knives. They don't have the big fat belly that the newer wingers do. And the smaller blade has been polished and sharpened by the cutler. It also carries that Winger Delamont Three Faces tank stamp. Uh, but it appears to have kind of a drop point or sheep's foot shape to it. And all of these I've ever seen, these, these older Winger officers, have a clip point blade. Uh, this is the way it came to Dave from the seller from Greece. Uh, so the, the cutler who most recently worked on this did not do this. Uh, but it's possible that this blade might have lost its tip somewhere back in its history and been reprofiled by someone. We just don't know. Uh, if so, it wasn't much because there's not a whole lot of real estate left there to put any more blade in. And you can get a look at what a great job putting this knife back together the cutler did. And then the back tools. This is a four-turn decoratively grooved corkscrew. Here you can see an aluminum spacer. There are no liners because the handles serve as both, both the covers and the liners, much like a modern day pioneer. Uh, and then here is the old style three-sided awl. It is a little loose in the open position. That's the only flaw to this knife's action, but it does snap shut. Let's measure and weigh this knife uh, and compare it to a modern day Pioneer, another aluminum knife, uh, because I have something remarkable to show you. So I'll get out my um, digital calipers here, turn them on, zero them out.
it seems like with this knife we're coming up right at 92 millimeters. So we know how that compares against the uh, Victorinox Pioneer. They're 93 millimeter knives. So this knife seems to be about a millimeter shorter. But what about the weight? Well, let's weigh the Pioneer first. And we'll take a look at it in grams. I come up with uh, 70 grams. Now here's the remarkable thing. This knife weighs 65 grams. It's substantially lighter than today's Pioneer with the same tool set. It's, this doesn't have a corkscrew granted, but uh, it's a little larger of a knife too. So I just think that's a remarkable. This knife is light as a feather for a metal knife. And of course that's down to the aluminum scales and the aluminum separator. Okay, well it's time to send this baby back to its daddy. I want to thank Dave Arnold for the short stop here in the U.S. so I could make this video and share this rare and remarkable knife with my viewers. Uh, you know, Dave told me that he's been able to collect eight of these first shield wingers. And I've been able to feature several of them on my channel, so I'll put the links below. There's the Black Beauty I talked about. There's a Type 1908 Soldier's Knife with the shield. And uh, there's also a Winger Tahara in stainless. So it's time to let it go. Uh, but first, how about some before and after pictures? Thanks for watching.